Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another video. It's been a bit. I've been very busy with work. Uh, and I'm still technically very busy today, but I found some time before work because I realized it's close to the end of the month. And this is going to be my best chance to actually try and talk about um, what's going to be coming up for the upcoming month in Fago. So let's go. I hope you enjoy the video. Again, I have to actively... Take get my tired self not sleep and <laughs> not prefer for work to do these so any support to them is always greatly appreciated so let's go and uh god damn my brain is just not wired today anyway here's what we're expecting currently we're going through the waltz in the moonlight collaboration event and this is what it's expected for may it is literally just two events and actually if we look here in may it was literally just two events. <laughs> These were the only two events that are scheduled for May. And early June is probably what a lot of people are expecting for Lost Belt number six. Um, yeah, and that makes a whole lot of sense. So, and there's also some stuff that we just don't know about. Like, obviously, a good example is this. This didn't happen on the JP version of the game. Arjuna Alter is currently here for us, and he kind of was a shock to everyone. Uh, this is a very light month. Honestly, I would expect something uh, similar to this, where it's kind of a shocking either banner or maybe it's the return of something. I don't know. But it just, like, it's two little events. It's just, it's literally just two events. Anyway, let's go and look at them. There is a, technically a third one, but I think we already had this one, the Fake Grand Order Camelot, the movie pre-release campaign. Pretty sure we already had this a long time ago, and if we didn't, I guess they'll just quickly give us this. But here's Betty. Uh, I don't see this. Yeah, I don't know if we had this already, to be honest. It's been a very long time. That This movie has been long since released for us, so I don't think they can do it. They, probably, they chances are did it when it actually released, but I don't remember at this point. But anyway, the Holy Grail Front, My Super Camelot 2021, or is it going to be for us 2023? It's going to be a uh, Super Camelot Holy Grail Front. So it's going to be another uh, Grail Front. And these are always fun. I like these. It's a very easy type of event. It lets me use units that maybe don't get a lot of use, and I get to have a different kind of a go experience for a bit. I remember seeing some people just actively don't like these, and I, I disagree with that. I think these are fun something different it's also something very easy so you can also just do one of these knock out one of these grail fronts and then maybe go continue the story especially if you're someone who is not fully caught up with lost belt six yet you can definitely go and do that the event mechanics is very simple it's literally the same as the other ones i don't know if there's any changes for that but i doubt there will be any in terms of game updates they say that they're going to be adding the memories of trifus costume which would be, uh, no, is it this one? Yes, I believe it is this one. Costume one. Yeah, it should be this one. Could be this one, but I don't think it's that one. It'll be that one, so it'll be cool. If you haven't gotten it already, you can get it. Uh, servant strengthening for Lancer, the non underboot one. And then we have Tristan over here getting us quick. I think we already have the animation updates because we get these so early, so we chances are already have it for all the Knights of the Round Table. They got them already. Uh, in terms of the summoning campaign, this one's pretty simple. It's just literally the Knights of the Round Table. It's Artoria, the Lancer. Saber, Lancer, good. And we have Mordred, we have Tristan, we have Gawain, we have Lancelot. And yeah, it's a very basic banner. Gawain and Tristan are story locked, so if you actually are a big fan, and so is uh, Booby Lancer over here. If you're a big fan of your Gawain and Tristan and you don't want to use a Selectifor, uh, this is your best bet of pro probably getting one of them. I would assume that. I actually don't know how they're going to divide the banner up here, because again, our banner system has been a little bit different. I don't know if all three of them will be on both of them. I do expect these two to be their own separate banners, um, but I don't know if they'll have, like, oh, these two knights, like, uh, Artoria Lancer gets Gawain and Lancelot, and then Mordred gets Tristan and the other one. But in terms of the fives, Mordred is a free, and Artoria uh, Saber Lancer is uh, story locked. And there's literally a ticket coming up where you'll be able to pick either one of them. Don't summon on this. It's <laughs> there's literally no reason to summon on this. <laughs> Just don't summon on it. I thought Merlin would be on it because he's literally like the poster child for it, but nope, not on it. Which I guess is better for. 
for everything. You don't want to potentially go crazy for Merlin of all people, especially when we're about to get new, better Buster stuff. All right, and then we're going to get a rerun of Summer Camp 2020. This is the last summer rerun that we've had because the summer event for this year isn't getting rerun. So may it better make sure you actually do it when it comes up. This will have a summoning campaign, which is pretty obvious. It will have Summer Kiara. It will have Summer Ilya, Summer Brunhilde, uh, Sigurd, Langling, Emiya, Ab Summer Abby, uh, Summer Tomoe, Summer Murasaki, and not non-summer uh, Fujino. Uh, I forget that she's here at the end of the story stuff. But yeah, that, that we actually got her a little bit early on NA version. But this is when she officially re-returned for um, the JP side of the game. And in terms of our free unit, we have a very good... Where is she? A very good single target Lancer and Concert U. Very nice. Easy MP5. She's quick. She has... Uh, she's very quick built. She's a very good single target lancer for quick and anti-male. So there's plenty of males for her to easily go around and punch in the face and stuff like that. This is maybe the most tempting a lot of people will probably have, especially if you didn't have any of these summer units before. Um, if you either missed out on some or you weren't able to get them. You have some popular ones, like obviously Tomoy is extremely popular. Abby, I think... I don't remember if she's good now. I think she's still kind of underwhelming, or at least a lot of the JP side found her underwhelming. She's really liked, so it chances are if she is not fully up to snuff because of how like she is, they would want her to be better. Uh, I have used her from time to time. I think I have her NP2, and I don't use her very often. But in the small edge cases where I do use her, I'm usually okay with her and what she does. Uh, but yeah, not, not really one that sets the world on fire as far as I'm aware of. But these other two are always really nice. And Fujino is still a very solid single target um, archer. Super good, especially for a collab unit who very rarely ever shows up. This is your, um, which is unfortunate because she's not going to have a solo raid up now that I actually look at this. That really sucks. <laughs> that really super sucks. This is going to be very hard to get her if you try and get her. So my best saying is you should probably skip this banner. Because none of if if it is going to be st structured the way I think it is, it means Abby's going to be with three featured SRs. And that's just, you're, that's just not good. That's just ain't good, bro. It ain't, it ain't good for you. Um, in terms of the males, I don't really have anything to say about these dudes. Sigurd's cool. He's voiced by Kaiba from Yu-Gi-Oh! That's all I have to say about him, though. I don't think he's actually very good, but he is very cool. Um, Kiara is obviously the big one here. She is a super fantastic arts looper, and in general is very good with MP generation and is super worth having. Um, it's going to be up to you whether or not you think she's worth having. There's going to be a Castoria banner coming up, so if you're someone who wants to be fully invested in arts and is planning to get Castoria and you want... A um, arts looper that can just basically deal with any any like node, unless it's a very weirdly specific one uh, that she can't handle, and you don't have Ishtar or the upcoming Kama. Because I think no, actually, isn't Kama quick? Let me double check this because Kama is actually Summer Kama is also very 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 good. Let me see. When the hell did they have their goddamn shit? Was weird. Because of all the pandemic stuff. And anyway. Ah, uh, dun dun dun. Spoilers. I don't remember if she's quick or if she's... She's art, She's also an arts AoE unit. Uh, so if you're probably going for Summer Kama, you should be good not going for Summer Kiara. She is definitely worth it. Again, it's one of those... It's not one of those cases of me saying one is better than the other. You have to look at a certain point when you're saving a whole bunch about use cases. Summer Kiara and Summer Kama basically share the same use in that they are AoE units who are arts who are very good at what they do. And having both of them is maybe <laughs> overkill. You don't need that many good arts uh, units. Like, for example, I have a bunch of them. I went for a bunch of them because that's what I wanted to run with Castoria. And it boils down to that I basically just use uh, Summer Musashi. And I don't use Space Ishtar, and I don't use Summer Kiara, even though I like having both of them. In terms of uses, I usually, enough of the time, she's good enough, and then I'll go out and do that. So yeah, 
Again, if you care about any of these characters, I wish you the best of luck of summoning, but if you're someone who's looking at pure uses, you have to look at what's future, what you plan to summon, and kind of make the value judgment from there. I'm going to say right now, if you're going for one or the other, if you're going for both of them, it's overkill. But if you're someone who's like, I don't care, I'm going for both of them, then I guess that's the best for you. I'm not going to say it's the smartest idea. It's what I did. It's what I'm technically doing. And it worked out for me, and it could potentially work out for you. But a lot of the times when it comes to gotchas, it won't work out for you. So best of, but you know, best of luck. I'm saying what? Be smart, make good decisions, and yes, that's it. And yeah, that's basically it for end of May. Lost Belt Six should be early June. Even er it was June 11th for the JP side of the game. But I think it'll be super early for us. It might be early June for part one, and then part two will be somewhere in the back. But it's gonna be hard to know. There's gonna be so many banners. It's gonna about it's about to pop off. It's about to go crazy because we're gonna have to have a buttload of banners with a buttload of guild units. And I'm still wondering whether or not they're gonna do this thing where technically Morgan came out with Lost Belt Six, but then she had a rerun banner like two months later where you could get her again. I wonder if NA will do that. I think they should do that. It would be kind of sucky if they didn't do that. I never understood why J Actually, I do know why JP did this. It's because when Morgan first was revealed, she wasn't the favorite. And then the story happened. And then everyone loved Morgan. So they released the banner again. Saying like, hey, I know a lot of you were going for Tristan, like female Tristan and female... Um, I went over there. I'm purposely trying not to use their name in case anyone is trying to um, save their names for stories. I know what they are, so don't don't go correcting me. But the point is, is that she became super popular. Like, hey, go ahead. We're gonna give you another chance to summon, and maybe or maybe get more MP copies if you only had one and stuff like that. Because she was just super. I'm I'm gonna. When she released, not a lot of people thought she was very good, and the reason was is that she was a, a buster. She was like. It, was, it wasn't a buster theme meta. The anniversary unit had me come on. And, like, so many things had changed from when this banner first came out for right here. And then two months later, an entire meta shift had happened. And people wanted her. It was <laughs> insane. <laughs> and we're not going to be able to experience that just because we're living with foresight. But anyway... That's basically it for the, the month of May. It's not really a lot. Again, there's probably going to be some stuff that we just didn't have on the JP version of the game that we'll get exclusive for NA, and some maybe some events will show up earlier. I don't know. It's hard to kind of guess with a lot of that stuff, but, you know, anything could happen. But that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Like I said, you can leave support. You can do all that. I'm going to go get ready for work, and I'll hopefully be able to get back to making videos at a regular pace. Till next time, everyone. Goodbye.